as Jesus is, so are we in this world. Right now. Right here. Right in your seat. Not in heaven. Not in the by and by. Right now. As Jesus is, so are you. If you're saved. Glory to God. If you're not saved, we're going to fix that in a few moments. Welcome to victory. Place where the word of God and the power of God is available to you. So now, victory, we, we've got to understand that we have a supernatural assignment. And our assignment is to take a generation of people and to empower them to no longer be victims but to live victorious. Now, now, this assignment is not just for Pastor Cynthia and myself. It is for the household of victory. Did you get a hold of this? That's what you are graced to do. That's what the anointing on your life is to do, is to take a generation of people that are used to being victims and empower them to live victorious, to cause them to live victorious in their life in every area. Our assignment is to cause people to live a supernatural life in a natural world. Oh, come on, somebody. To empower people to overcome their problems, to overcome the impossibilities of life, to live above sickness and disease. Come on, somebody. Empower people to live above lack, to live above the limits and the restraints of this world, to become like Jesus. That's what we're called to do, to empower people to live like Jesus. Oh, this is good. This is good. Raising a generation to live in the supernatural. See, what you just experienced before I came up with this word is supernatural. That's the supernatural power of God. And the supernatural ought to be natural for you and I. Mm, mm, mm. Here's the deal. It takes changed people to change a city. Oh, you, you need to get a hold of that. <laughs> and we are agents of change. Every place a believer goes, every place a Christian goes, you ought to bring change. We did not get born again to imitate the world. We got born again to change the world. Every, you need to change your world. You need to change things on your job, change things in your house, change things in your neighborhood, change things in your college, in your school. You are agents of change. You're not to blend in. You are to change. You're not to imitate. Come on, you are the originator. You got the real thing, amen? So God created you and I to change things just like him, to go from level to level and glory to glory to keep moving forward. I want to emphasize this again. If you didn't take this note, you might want to take it down. We are supernatural people. Christians, believers, we are supernatural people, and we have no business living ordinary, average lives. There we go right here. Got quiet on that one. We have no business living ordinary, average lives. You should not have an average year. For a Christian to have an ordinary, average year is deception. Because you are supernatural. You are far from average. God is in you. Jesus is in you. The Holy Ghost is in you. You are not average. The average person doesn't have all that on the inside of them. Amen. Glory to God. So your expectation, your life should be much higher than somebody that's without Jesus. The, the, do you remember reading your Bible where the apostle Paul rebuked the church at Corinth for behaving like mere men and women? Like, what's wrong with y'all acting like mere men and women, like average people? You, do you know who you are? You're a Christian. You're a believer. You're the most powerful people on the planet. God is in you. God is with you. God is for you. What are you?
you doing acting like mere men and women? That's deception. Oh, come on, somebody. That's, that's what we're called to do, to remove the deception off of people so that we can be what God said we can be, so that we can do what God said we can do, so that we can have what God said we can have. So what do we have to do? We got to deal with that old mindset that is trying to hinder us from walking in what God has for us in this new season. This is a season for the church, for the believers. This is a, this is a season of divine change. How many people know God, he's unfolding, he's, he's progressive, Some, something different is happening. We're, we're in a season of divine change and great grace. Things are going to happen in your life that you didn't earn, you didn't deserve, you didn't work for. More than your eyes have seen, your ears have heard, or even entered into your heart. We have stepped into this season. And we got to change the way we think so that we can receive what God has for you and I in this season. Mm. Praise God. You got me excited. Amen. You know, when he said great grace, I was just listening and just thinking, you know, grace means, just like Dad said, is to get what you didn't earn. You didn't earn salvation. Jesus paid the price and gave it to you. And so you're in a season that the prosperity that belongs to you, Jesus got it for you. You're not trying to earn it. He got it for you, and you're in a position to receive what he got for you. You didn't earn healing. Jesus got healing for you, and you put yourself in a position to receive what he got for you. But see, that, that's great. That's grace. And greater grace means that it'll come on you much more abundantly. You know, Ephesians 3.20. God, we're in a season of exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can ask, your highest prayers, your highest thoughts, your highest desire, time for manifestation, according to the power that's working on the inside of you. Now, are you releasing that power to go to work? Oh, oh come on now. Now, Dad, now, Dad's talking about change this morning, and it sparked me also about a conversation that I had at the bank the other day. And I want to see where our mindset is. I was talking to a young lady at the bank, uh, um, one that worked there. And, you know, sometimes when people get in my presence and they don't have to know that I'm a pastor, they just begin to tell all. And I know that's because God wants to be expressed in their life. Amen. If in case you didn't know that, when people tell you that, you know, you say, how you doing today? I'm not feeling well. I feel sick. I got this back. I, hey, God, the invisible God got in your body to express himself today in healing and removing burdens and destroying yokes and bringing some comfort in somebody's life. So she was telling me about, you know, she telling me what church she went to and she began to share with me about, you know, I go to blah, blah church. I've been a member for seven years, but I really haven't been consistent in going. She says, every Sunday I've been getting up, making excuses. I seem to save all my work that I have to do, like washing the clothes and, you know, housework and stuff. I seem to put it off till Sunday, and I use it as an excuse for not going to church. But I really feel like I need to really get back and be consistent. She says, my problem is I just haven't made a decision to do so. And I said, well, you know, I said, you, you're right. You really need to go back to church. I said, somebody needs to see you there being faithful. I said, someone needs to see your smiling face. Somebody needs to see you praising God and uplifting God. Do you know your life can impact someone else's? And she looked at me stunned and said, wow, I never thought about that. She says, I only thought of church as what I can get when I go. How much word can I be fed? How much can I gain from my experience? What, what can I take away from it? I said, so you like to inhale but you never want to exhale. Now, I'm asking you today who had that kind of mindset. Don't tell me. <laughs> Please don't tell me. I said, what if Jesus had stayed in his four walls of his house or room, had an experience with God, all of his experience with God, studying out the, 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 um, the Bible and all the scriptures, just having encounters with God and never got outside the four walls. I said, I wonder where we be, very lost and hell bound. So I said, your life makes a difference. 
I said, I, I said, you don't know who's watching you. You don't know who's looking at you and saying, I'm looking at their life and that family and, and saying, it's giving me hope. I can remember when we were in, in, the, in the second church that we were part of, in case you didn't know it, we, we used to be Catholics, and so we came out of Catholic Catholicism into a um, Pentecostal church, and we started doing nursing home ministry. And at that time, my daughter was three or four, and it was um, that time, Brother Tyrone Marshall and Brother Sister Marshall and little three- and four-year-old Brittany, we were going to do faithfully nursing home ministry. And I remembered a young man that would join us, and we were just so excited that you would come out and join us. And he looked at us. He says, that's the least I can do. I'm a single man. I ain't got no kids, and I'm watching you, married with a little kid, get up here and do this faithfully. He says, you give inspiration to me. See, 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 you don't even know. Because we're being faithful as a family with a small kid. It's causing that person to take another level. I can remember how many Kenneth Copeland conferences I've been with when my kids were real little and we all go as a family and people I don't know come up and say, you're a blessing to us to see you worshiping as a family, seeing that there, that is hope in marriage, that you can raise a family in the things of God. See, you are, you, you're not only here to receive word, but you are here to exhale. You're exhaling your faithfulness. You're exhaling your commitment. You're exhaling your praise and worship. You know, somebody might need you to lay hands on them, just like when we had some people who were sick. You carry the presence of God, God himself, in your physical flesh if you're born again, and God needs to use you. For that's why you don't know how valuable you are. That's why you would stay home and you don't feel that you need to come to church because you think it's all about you. That's why people say, oh, I don't need to, uh, I can forsake the assembly of myself together. It, it's all right. I got internet. I can watch it streaming live. I can read the Bible. I got plenty of these evangelists, TV um, um, evangelists and teachers I can watch. And I'm not knocking them, but they were never supposed to be your main course. They were never to be your main, they were your supplement. God, God sets you in the body as it pleases him. He sets you in the local body of church. He is working through the church and he has a certain pastor and a certain family of believers that he's called you to, to not only provide their anointing on you, but for you to give your anointing to make the house function, to make this part of the body operate as our Lord Jesus, general and commander, gives the orders and the assignment. So, we, so, so that person that would sit home lost the value of how valuable they are. They don't realize, yeah, you're, you're full of all the word that you've gotten off of the television evangelist. You're full of studying the Bible, but who are you impacting it with? You're filling up, but you're not giving out anything. There are people who are dying. Don't you know the life of a Christian is to follow Jesus? He died so others can live. Don't you know you're to take a death in your flesh, a death in your comfort level, a death in your own interest, and things that you got to do so somebody else can live? Don't you know every place you put to death, someone's waiting on the other side of your obedience? It's not just for the pastors. It's not just for the elders. It's not just for the ministers. It's not just for the deacons. It's not just for the department leader. It's not just for the covenant co connector leaders. It's for the body. We make up Jesus. You're valuable. God paid. He, his blood was, of his son was shed for you. You know the value of something by what you pay for it. If you ladies went out and your average dress that you bought cost you $150 and one day you went out and got one for $1,000, how would you handle the $1,000 dress in comparison to how you handle all the others that were $150 or less? Would they end up in the laundry pile on the floor? Would, they be would that $1,000 dress be crammed in your closet? Or would it be in a special bag sitting off in a special place? Because you determine the value of something by what you pay for it. Uh. Oh, let me help you men. 
Y'all like rims, but suppose you ain't got rims, you got hubcaps. <laughs> now, how you had, now whether you wash and take care of those hubcaps versus if someone came out and gave you a set of, or you bought a set of $4,000 rims, put them on your car, how would you treat those in comparison to those hubcaps? Why do they carry more attention? Because they're more valuable. What determines the value? What you pay for it. Well, God, the owner of the universe, who owns all the planets, who owns all the stars, who owns all the gold, all the diamonds, all the rubies, all the pearls, all the emeralds, all the jasper stones, Satan wanted to be like God. He wanted to rule something. He could have given him one of those things. But I wonder why he didn't. Because he could never exhaust all of that. It was not priceless to him because he had so much of it. He wanted to give something that cost him something. He wanted to give something that he only had one of that was precious to him. His only begotten son, the blood of Jesus, was the only son he had. But he did it for you and me. He found you valuable enough. And he put that value on you when Jesus made a decision to say, yes, I will go and suffer in their place. I will be the sacrifice. I'll take all your wrath for sin, your judgment on, in my body when it belongs in their body. Because I see your love for them, daddy. And I love what you love. I offer myself. He gave what was priceless to redeem you. So you don't understand, but he didn't redeem you to sit you at home. Come on, come on. He didn't redeem you for you to read the Bible in your own little place by yourself and never come to church where other people need to have the glory that's in you. Come encounter with that glory that's on the inside of you, that God that lives on the inside of you. He didn't tell you to forsake the assembly of yourself. And then he didn't tell you to come here and with the attitude, I'm just going to get. What can I get? I'm going to feed. I'm going to get. What can they do for me today? Jesus, what have you done for me lately? I wonder what good word the pastor got for me. And then I get my good word and then I get my tail up and leave immediately without considering someone needed an encounter with the God on the inside of you today. Because you're valuable. The blood of Jesus was, was shed to make you valuable. Yes. You don't know the price you are. You don't know the God that lives on the inside of you. You see, you have an invisible God. Come on. That desired to put on flesh to express himself in a visible world. John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God, and the word was God. And in verse 14, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. The message said the word came into our hometown. It became a body. It put on a human physical flesh, a human being, and moved into our hometown. Well, you are an expression of an invisible God when you get born again. God comes on the inside of you and he wants to give expression, an invisible God wants to give an expression of who he is through your earth suit, your physical body. So for you to think that you have no value, for you to think that you don't have a word for somebody, God's in you. Quiet down. That thought that comes to you that, that, that sounds like an edifying and encouraging or a comforting word to someone, but you're holding back because you're afraid, that's living like an ordinary man or ordinary woman. 
See, Satan wants you to live from your humanity. He wants you to think that you ain't got nothing and you want to evaluate yourself and your shyness and your lack of, 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 of confidence and your lack of ability or your lack of education. Or he wants you to judge yourself. I was raised in, a ba in the project. I didn't have advantages. I had disadvantages in life. You don't understand the parents I had. You don't understand the childhood I had. You don't understand how I was born with my disadvantages. But when you come into the kingdom of God, I got news for you. You get reborn into a new family. Glory to God. So now we in the family of God. We all got the same advantages. They're called God advantages. We walk in the glory of God. We are an express image of who he is. Oh, glory, no, go, glory, go, glory, go, go, glory, go, go. glory, 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 <laughs> glory to God. See, you got to know what Jesus came to do in the earth. He didn't come just to show you how to be a follower. He came to show you who you are. I said God, an invisible God, wanted to put on flesh to express himself in a visible world. So an invisible God got in the womb of a woman called Mary, wrapped flesh around that spirit, and was birthed in the air in the earth. And God tells you that he lives in Jesus. In 2 Corinthians 5, 19, it said God was in Christ reconciling, him, reconciling the world unto himself. If you read all the gospel, Jesus will tell you, it is God in me. I'm in him, he's in me. But he's in you if you're born again. And he wants to be expressed. He wants to be expressed in this world. As Jesus is, so are you in this world. Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm in the spirit talking about So, in actuality, your life and my life is just a commercial for Jesus. Now, the question is, should I give you more airtime or do I need to pull your commercial? Maybe you need to say that again, Pastor. So, the question is. Now, God's speaking. Our life is a commercial for Jesus. So the question is, should I give you more airtime or do I need to pull your commercial? And I, I just want to throw this in. If you're not living supernaturally, we might need to pull yours. Because we've been created to live a supernatural life in a natural world. Our assignment is to empower people to live above the impossibilities of life. Glory to God. We should not think like the unsaved, unbelieving world thinks. We should not talk like they talk. We should not act like they act. We should not live like they live. We should not have the same results in our lives that they had. Glory to God. You can go through the same thing, but you ought to come out. You ought to come out in the victory so that God will be glorified, you will be edified, and the devil will be terrified of you. Yeah. And you see, because you're guaranteed to have victory. And so what I've understood is the reason that we don't, we don't operate in the house of God the way we should and in our own natural life, the reason we don't is because we have not renewed our mind. And that's the reason why we're not living a, a supernatural life, because we have not renewed our mind. We still think like average people. We still, we still got the same limitations and restrictions in our mind. When God is trying to get you and I out the box to be what he called us to be, to do what he called us to do, to have what he called us to have. Glory to God. 
If you don't have it right now, you should be thinking that you should think you have it. You should be expecting your your expectation should be any moment it's about to show up in my life. Glory to God. See, when, when you understand who you are, you, you, when you understand how important you are, how valuable you are, when you get the correct image of you, nobody has to beg you to come to church consistently. When you understand how important and valuable you are, nobody has to beg you to bring your gift to the house of God. Nobody has to beg you to serve. Nobody has to beg you to tithe and give. Because you want to do it because you know this is part of the call. This I want to see this vision manifest. I want to impact lives. I want to change this city. I got born again to do this. This is my time. If you're not doing any of that, you're not you're you're not functioning properly. You are malfunctioning as a Christian. Wow. See, here's, here's the thing about you got to renew your mind. Renewing your mind means taking on the mind of Christ or agreeing with the word of God. Oh, come on, somebody. And so when you start agreeing with the word of God, it changes the way you think. And now it allows you to impact and influence other people's lives. Amen. Oh, I wish you'd get a hold of it. See, see, if you don't change the way you think, if you don't renew your mind, no matter how willing you are, God can't use you. See, and we all got saved to be used by God. But if your mind is not right, if your thinking is not right, if you're not in agreement with God, he really can't use you too much. Let me give you an example. The United States has ambassadors all over the earth. And, and we send them to that country to represent the United States, not them. We, we send them to that country to say what our president or our government would say. Glory to God. To have the same mindset. And, and we, if we send an ambassador to some country and he starts thinking and saying things that the United States does not, is not in agreement with, how many people know he gets pulled from that ambassadorship and pull and, and lost his job and might even go to jail. Or in other words, the bottom line is now because he doesn't think and speak like the United States, he no longer can be used. She no longer can be used. See, so so how how can God use you when when you don't even think when your your thoughts and your words are not even in agreement with him? You walking around talking about your week and, 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 and you're the most powerful people in the planet. You're talking about what you cannot do. And God said that you can do all things through Christ. Come on, come on, son. You see, you, you, got, you got to understand who you are so that we can be used on a whole nother level so that we can impact and influence other people's lives. The whole world is waiting for you and I. They're waiting for the sons and daughters of God to show up. They're not waiting for the imitations. They're not waiting for the fake crew, the sometimes in, sometimes out roller coaster Christian. They're raiding on the real sons and daughters of God that know who they are, that know how important they are, know how valuable they are, know how powerful they are. They're waiting for them to show up and to remove their burdens and to destroy their yokes and to destroy all the works of the devil off their lives. That's what we're called to do. Oh, and you come here for us to train you and equip you to go to the world and to destroy the works of the devil and to change anything the devil has tried to build up. To tear it down and to rebuild the kingdom. To do it God's way. Glory to God. 
And there's a grace on your life to do it. But if you don't even renew your mind, if you think, you know, see, ah. See, at, at some point, this word has to become valuable to you. It has to become important to you. Otherwise, it will never change your life. And see, and, and that's why the world has this impression that when you, we come into the house of God and we bring our tithes and offerings, they feel you're getting ripped off. They call you foolish. Why, why do they say that? Because they don't see any value in the word. So they think you're not getting anything. Glory to God. And that's why some Christians don't even come to church consistently because they don't, they don't think this word will change their life. They don't think it will change their destiny. It's not even valuable to them. When this, the word of God is the most important, valuable thing in the universe. It can change every impossible situation in your life. It'll change your marriage. It'll change your family. It'll change your health. It'll change your financial situation. It will change the persecution. It will change everything in your life. It's the most important thing. It's more important than clothes. It's more important than cars. It's more important than homes. We have the most important product in the planet. And Christians don't even realize it. Man, when the word of God comes, you ought to be so locked in. If somebody talk to you, you want to smack them. But see, but when it ain't valuable to you, you, you know, hey, all right. Come on, devil, distract me some more because there ain't nothing happening in my life anyway. Tell you, we, 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 got to start, we got to start looking at and evaluating our life. You got to get back to understanding how important and valuable and precious you are. When, when you don't show up, something is missing. When you don't bring your part, something is missing. But, but the devil has made you think you're not important. Go, God. It, like, you know, ain't no point. No, you know, I don't make a difference. I show up when I want, do what I want. Because, you know, I'm not important. See, the devil's always trying to get you to focus on what you cannot be, what you cannot do, and what you cannot have. And listen to me. Un until you grab a hold of what I'm telling you, you will never, you will never exceed your previous generation. See, God brought you here to grab a word to change your life and the generations that follow you. We look around in the city and we see generations of people dying in the same place. Great grandma, grandma, mom, and children all dying in the same project. Nobody busting out. And one word from God can change a generation. Oh, come on, somebody. One man, one woman with a word from God can change a generation. And you got more word, come on, somebody, yeah. than any other generation that's ever been on this planet. Yes. You. you got to realize how important and how valuable you are. Yeah. You are the change agents yeah. in the earth. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. They don't know anything. They don't know what you know. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. They don't see like you see. See, we, we should have a different perception. We should have a different reality. We should have a different expectation. We should have a different outlook on life. You, you see some crazy stuff on the news, well, all that don't apply to you. Ebola don't belong to you. 
Oh, come on, somebody. Well, you know, they treating somebody in the city. Well, praise God. I ain't worried about it. ain't coming to my house. They ain't coming to my church. Jesus is Lord. I plead the blood of Jesus over everything up in here. And devil, you will not cross that bloodline in the name of Jesus. Come on, that's supernatural living. That, come on, that's somebody that knows who they are. That's somebody that's going to take a stand. That's somebody that's bold enough to be what Jesus called them to be. See, 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 when you have not renewed your mind, you put up with too much stuff. You tolerate too much stuff. You accept too much stuff. You are accepting things you should be dominating. But because your mind has not been renewed, you think, oh, well, I guess it's flu season. Give me a flu shot. I'm going to give you a flu shot. Jesus was wounded for my transgression, bruised for my iniquity. The chastisement of his peace was upon me, and by his stripes I am healed. That's your flu shot. Now go and take that flu shot and leave CVS alone. Let them, let them say that for the unbelievers. You got your shot. You got your shot. Tell somebody you got your shot. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, I wish I had some believers in the house. I wish I had some believers in the house. I'm telling you, it's a new generation of believers in town. Come on, it's, come on, it's time to stand and give God some praise. Come on, it, 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 it's time to praise him a little bit. Come on, things are turning around in your life. Glory to God. I, I believe you're understanding how important you are, how valuable you are. Come on, your days of lack are over. You're not going through another year of lack. Come on, you need to see yourself prosperous. Jesus became poor that you might be rich. You don't have to figure it out. You don't have to work it out. You, you became rich not because of your education, not because of your, your intellectual uh, wisdom regarding finances. You became rich because of what Jesus did. Will you believe it? We got to get back to just believing God, believing his word, believing what Jesus has already done for us. It's really just that simple. That's supernatural living. Oh, did you get a hold? That is supernatural living. Believe in the word. Believe in what Jesus said. Believe in what already belongs to you. That is supernatural living. That's not hard. We're believers. My God, we ought to be able to believe. <laughs> Well, Pastor, you don't know what I'm going through. I don't need to know what you're going through. What did God say about it? That's all you really need to know is what did God say about it? You keep focusing on the problem. I'm trying to get you to focus on the promise. I'm trying to get you to focus on the answer. I'm trying to get you to focus on the solution. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. That's why in these last days it's so important for you not to forsake the assembling of yourselves together. It's so important for you to be around people of like precious faith. Because soon as you walk out this door, the devil going to try to talk you out of everything you heard. And try to make you think that what I'm saying is foolish and what God has written is foolish. And if you don't know that you know and if you're not putting some more word on the inside of you, you're going to be just like mere average unsaved people with your saved self. But not here in the house of victory. Oh, I said, not here in the house of victory. 
Oh, come on, come on. We're Christians. We're going to have the best marriages. We're going to have the best families. Come on, somebody. We're going to have the best health. We're going to have the best finances. Come on, come on. We're talking about Jesus. You just need to believe it. You, you don't have to make it happen. You just need to get in agreement with it. You just need to get in agreement with it. Well, you don't know, you don't know how bad it looks. I'm trying to get you to see how good it looks. Oh, you you focusing on the wrong thing. Huh? I'm trying to get your mind in the right place. That's Satan getting you to focus on what you don't have right now. What you don't have in your life right now is only temporary. Oh, if you can get a hold of that, it's only temporary. It's only temporary. It's changing. The more you believe God, the more you'll see the change manifest in your life. Because you're designed to reflect what you focus on. Yeah. If you focus on every problem, you will reflect that in your visible world. But if you would turn and focus on the word, you will begin to re reflect the realities of God's promise in your physical world. And that's how you've been made, your mind, will, and emotions. Whatever it spends time paying attention to the most, that's what we're going to see showing up in your marriage, in your finances, in your body, in your family life, in your children. Whatever you focus the most on is what you will reflect in the earth. And, that is a, and that's what the devil comes to do. He wants you to only focus from a human point of view. That's his objective, is to always make you look at things from a humanity. And so you filter everything through your situation, through your problems, through your cares, and you stay defeated. And God came for you to look at stuff from heaven's perspective. You know, it might be this, but what does heaven have to say about it? Then take heaven and put it on top of that situation and say, oh, it ain't going to be any time for this thing will change. But that's how we're supposed, that's living supernatural. See, I don't want any of you to feel condemned because some of you might think living supernatural is, well, you know, I, I, I didn't, this is part of supernatural, raising the dead and healing people and living in abundance and, but, and removing burdens and storing yokes. That is supernatural. But it starts with the right thinking, thinking like God. That's the start of living supernatural. When you get your thoughts, your mind, your will, your emotions to think like God's word, then it releases the prosperity. It releases the raising of the dead. It releases the word of prophecy. We're going to teach some more, and we're going to get into the word, and we'll be able to go line upon line, precept upon precept, in the word of God. Stay tuned. Amen. You just Amen. be in your seat Praise next God. week. Amen. And Tuesday. And what we're going to start to show you is, you know, we've been focusing on finding out who Jesus is. But you need to find out who you are. You know who you are? Just like Jesus. As Jesus is, so are you. You are just like him in your spirit right now. Oh, yeah, that was an eye opener right there. Uh, uh, well, are we going to minister on that? See, because if, if you just focus on what Jesus is and it don't even apply to you, it, you and I, it's not going to change your life. You got to know who he is, and then you got to know you just like him. Oh, come on, somebody. You got to know. Oh, I know that's bold, but that's what we call to do. Go away to God. He is the one that made you just like like him. God started out making you and I in his image and after his likeness.